of all the things that are going to change between China and the U.S. in the years ahead, this is one of the biggest. China is already a massive global trader, both in terms of imports and exports. We see China out there hosting the Olympics with us at the table at the World Trade Organization. Where we're not used to seeing China is in our neighborhoods as a direct investor. Chinese investors are coming to the U.S. in growing numbers already. The takeoff is already occurring. The question is not whether we're going to let it in, but whether we're going to slam the door uh, on it now that it's starting. It became increasingly evident to a number of us that we're at a rather important tipping point moment where uh, investment flows around the world are changing. So the question is, if these investment flows are, are starting to, to come from China in a significantly uh, uh, larger volume, what's the best posture for the United States to maximize its benefit from them? China is accumulating a lot of capital, and as investors look for better and better returns, one option is going to be um, foreign direct investment in the U.S. A lot of the cost advantage is going away, and, and some of the interest in getting closer to uh, buyers and suppliers and value chains in the U.S. was becoming more attractive. There's just very little room left in China to just double your capacity again. They've been doing that for decades and decades, in fact, and that worked pretty well, uh, but that does not have a lot more legs to it for most Chinese firms. So now for the Chinese company of 2011, if they want to increase their margins, it can't just be doubling their output of, uh, of peripherals for the computer industry. It's going to mean moving downstream closer to where the margins are, are being made, and that means having a, a presence here directly in America. And that investment has the potential to create jobs in the U.S. It also means additional taxes being paid in American communities. Uh, Moberly, Missouri is seeing a Chinese company called Mamtech hire 600 people and invest to make artificial sweeteners. Now that's just one little 600 person factory, but you add all these up and pretty soon you're talking about significant potential for additional jobs, taxes, and other benefits for the U.S. The actual mechanisms for reviewing what investments constitute a national security threat and what don't is basically sound, but it tends to get distorted by a lot of political atmospherics. Most of the time, I would say the vast majority, almost all the time, CFIUS does work well. Uh, the criteria that CFIUS uh, employs is just national security. So the trouble often comes when politicians decide that they want to say something uh, publicly about the advisability of a foreign investment in the United States. It leaves the average Chinese feeling that the U.S. talks about free markets and open trade and investment, but that's just rhetoric, which is unfortunate, I think, because our data shows that the U.S. is very much open to Chinese investment. The growth of those numbers we talked about before is pretty clear cut. So it's unfortunate that uh, many Chinese policymakers and business people think that openness here is the exception, not the norm. It's going to take some work to recapture the narrative the largest new pools of capital have pooled up in China. The United States is in debt. So to keep our economy vibrant, uh, we very much need foreign investment. One thinks back to the 1980s when Japan was also some, in something of the same kind of doghouse. People were very wary about Japan buying up Rockefeller Center, Pebble Beach. And the Japanese did a very interesting thing. They began to build automobile uh, plants, uh, mostly in the South. And uh, suddenly their problem went away, and the U.S. got some nice employment. To not partake of any of the investment capital from such a big part of the world economy, um, you know, would be a missed opportunity. Looking at our political dynamics right now, at the fiscal, uh, budgetary, and political challenges we face in Washington, we have to be honest and say that uh, the future is a little bit unclear. We have a lot of work to do here at home to make ourselves the dynamic attractor of foreign investment. We're part of the global economy uh, that moves very fast today. Capital moves through uh, international value chains, not just within our borders. 
And by making ourselves attractive to foreign investment, we're ensuring that we're part of that story and not apart from it.